In this video, I'll provide a brief overview of time frequency analysis, which is like regular ERP research except that it focuses on how the frequency content of the signal varies over time. This is a huge topic, and I'm just going to skim the surface. If you'd like to know more, Mike Cohen has a great book and a terrific set of online lecture videos. And if you'd like to learn about the relationship between EEG oscillations and ERPs, there's a chapter in the Oxford Handbook of ERP Components. Here's the first figure from that chapter. We're looking at four single-trial EEG epochs following a stimulus. These are simulated data, and the neural response is unrealistically large relative to the noise so that we can see what's going on. On each trial, the stimulus elicits two alpha band bursts. The first burst is phase locked to the stimulus. On every trial, we get positive peaks at consistent times and negative peaks at consistent times. So, when we average the trials together, we can see the alpha burst in the average with the same positive and negative peaks. But the second alpha burst doesn't have a consistent phase from trial to trial. Where we have a positive peak in the first epoch, we have a negative peak in the second, and no peak at all in the third. These oscillations therefore cancel out in the average, which makes it look as if there was no stimulus-related brain activity at all during this period. In other words, when we do conventional averaging, any oscillations that aren't phase-locked to the stimulus become invisible. That's not good. Time frequency analysis is a way of making these oscillations visible by estimating the amplitude independent of the phase. That's what Fourier analysis does. It tells us the amplitude at each frequency independently of the phase. However, standard Fourier analysis completely gets rid of time. Time frequency analysis gives us a blend of time and frequency information. Remember that precision in the time domain is inversely related to precision in the frequency domain. But if we give up some precision in time and some precision in frequency, we can have a little of each. The basic idea is that instead of using infinite duration sine waves, we can reconstruct a time domain waveform by summing together a bunch of wavelets. Each wavelet is created by taking the sine wave and windowing it, often with a Gaussian windowing function. In this example, we're looking at a 10 Hz sine wave. We've now windowed it down to about 5 cycles or 500 milliseconds. So now we have a little bit of temporal resolution, but we've lost some frequency resolution. Here's what it would look like in the frequency domain. It now contains a somewhat broad range of frequencies around 10 Hz. If we think of an EEG epoch as consisting of the sum of a bunch of these wavelets, with wavelets of various frequencies at various times, we can transform an EEG epoch into a time frequency representation. You can see how a single trial of our simulated EEG data could be fit by combining a bunch of these 10 Hz wavelets. Here are all four of our single trial EEG epochs, and here's the time frequency transform for all of them. The x-axis represents time, just as in the original EEG epochs, but now the y-axis represents frequency. The color at each location in this two-dimensional space represents the magnitude of a given frequency at a given time. You can see the first burst of alpha band activity and also the second burst, but we're plotting amplitude independent of phase, so we can see that the second burst is happening at approximately the same time on each trial. As a result, if we average the time frequency representations together, we can see both the first burst and the second burst in the average. In contrast, the second burst was canceled out by the standard ERP averaging process. So, by transforming the data into a time frequency representation before we average, we can see oscillatory activity in the average data that would otherwise be invisible. We've given up some temporal resolution in the process because each 10 Hz wavelet lasts for about 500 milliseconds, so it's harder to know exactly when the alpha band activity begins and ends. But that's a small price to pay to be able to see a brain signal that would otherwise be cancelled out during the averaging process.